Hello everyone, you are watching Observing Greek. Jesus' name is not in the New Testament. In this video, I'm going to talk about the shortening of names and other words in Greek. The shortening of words, and particularly names, in Greek has misled people about the origin of these words, so I hope this video will also serve to clean up any misunderstandings. The Problem some say that Jesus' name is not found in any of the original copies of the New Testament. Some also say Jesus' name is connected to the names of a number of Greek or Roman gods. Someone might say, look for yourself. Instead of saying Jesus in Greek, Iesus, it says another name, Iota Eta Sigma. Another person might say, look for yourself. Jesus' name in the original manuscripts was Iota Sigma, the same as one of Bacchus' names. Other people in the Bible might also be mistakenly connected to Roman or Greek gods. Clearing the air. Some of this confusion comes from the shortening of people's names in Greek. In Greek, if the person was already expected to be well known, the writers would often shorten their name by removing unnecessary letters from the middle of the word. So if this was done in English, the name Jesus might be shortened to J-E-S, removing the S-U in Jesus or it might be shortened to just J-S, removing the E-S-U in Jesus. This was also sometimes done to words which the readers would already know and expect, like the word crucify in the account of Jesus' crucifixion. When they would shorten a word, a line was usually drawn above the remaining letters to show they form a shortened word. But enough classroom examples, let's see how this looks in actual manuscripts. So here we have uh, Leviticus chapter 1, verse 7, section B of verse 7 and 8. So in other words, it's not all of verse 7, it's uh, the second half of verse 7 and then all of verse 8. On the left we have Greek text, on the right we have English text. Now uh, the Greek text comes directly from Textus Sinaiticus, and you can view Textus Sinaiticus yourself online at textussinaiticus.org, I believe it is. And if .org doesn't work, then type in .com, but I'm pretty sure it's .org. Remember that I said that they usually put a line over letters to show that those letters are the remaining letters from a word that was shortened. So if we look at 1, 2, 3, 4, the fourth line down from the top, uh, we see a line over two letters, Kappa and Omega. Now... The thing that you want to notice here is kappa is the first letter of the word, omega is the last letter of the word. Now I know that for a fact because I've seen other words that have been shortened and also because I actually know what this word is. The thing that you should know is kappa, the first letter of the word, is usually shown to, um, sh to show us what word is being used. The last letter of the word is used to show how the word is being used because in Greek uh, nouns and verbs and adjectives they the end of the word tells you how it's being used in the sentence so we have kappa which tells us the word and omega which tells us um, how it's being used in the sentence and I know that this is a noun because there's actually an article right before it. the two letters right before it is a Tav or Taf and Omega. Um, so this article, this two-letter word here, is the word the in English, and it shows how it's being used in the sentence, just like the noun. And it matches the noun. Notice that they both end in Omega. So if this is an article, which it clearly is, then the word that's being shortened is clearly a noun, not a verb. Um, probably not an adjective. Now, if you look over to the right in the English translation on the same row as the word I'm talking about right here, you can see I translated it as Lord. For the English, I underlined the words that are translated and that were shortened in the Greek side. So, when you see an underlined word on the English side, if you look to the left, you'll see in the same row uh, a Greek word that was shortened with a line over it and those represent the same thing, one in English, one in Greek. 
So here we have the word curios or uh, curio is how it's put in this sentence because you can see the omega. Uh, so curio, to curio, which means to the Lord. So that's the first word that's being shortened in this example. Now we move down to the next row. The very first two letters in the row is theta and omega. Theta and omega is obviously shortened for theo, which is to God. And again, if we move up one row to the last two letters of the row, notice that there's another article, just like the article before the other shortened word. Same word, same kind of article, it's declined exactly the same way. So if you were to read it, it would be to curio, because remember the first shortened word is curio, and then to theo. If we skip down two more rows, uh, which is one, two, three, four, five, uh, the fifth row from the bottom, we actually have three words that are shortened. We have kappa upsilon, which looks different, but notice that uh, the kappa is the same exact letter as the first word that we were pointing out. Then we have theta upsilon, looks different, but notice that theta is the same letter as the first letter in the second word that we were uh, pointing out that was shortened. And then we have um, what looks to be an omega with a shortening or a line over it, halfway over it, but also hanging off over nothing. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a second. So again, because of the context, and this happens all over the place in this area, because um, the words Lord and God are repeated a lot in Leviticus. So this is the exact same word, has a kappa, um, and it has a upsilon, it looks like a Y, or sort of like a Y. Upsilon represents that it is in the genitive singular. So in other words, it's a possessive in Greek. So instead of being curio, then it's curiu, which is slightly different. It sounds very similar, but it's a possessive. And if we move over a little bit, we see um, actually right after curiu, we see another article, uh, which is composed of three letters, to or uh, tav, Omicron and Upsilon. Um, again, Upsilon is the last letter and it looks like a Y, which is an article. It's also genitive singular, which is a possessive, and it matches the following word, which is Theta Upsilon, which stands for Theu, which is of God. It's um, a genitive singular, again, just like uh, Kiryu or, or uh, Kappa Upsilon. They match with each other um, and it means of God. So if we look over to the right, it says of the Lord your God. So notice it says of, in other words, uh, this is showing possession. It's possessed, it, it's owned by the Lord, the God. And then finally after uh, uh, Thu, then we also see one final word which is composed of three visible letters in this row which is upsilon, which looks like a Y, mu, uh, which looks like an M, and omega, which looks like um, an omega. And then we have this bar over the top of omega and also the empty space. Now, this is actually interesting. What we've seen so far is we've seen words being shortened into two letters, the first letter and then the last letter of the word, and then everything in between taken out. With this word, all of the letters are actually in the word except for the last letter. So this shortening is different than the rest, where it is actually a word that has the first three letters and then the last letter is removed with a bar over um, the where the last letter would be and the letter before that where it is. So then finally we have one more example. It's the second line from the bottom. So one line up, we see kappa sigma. Now, kappa is the exact same word as it's always been throughout this whole example. It's curios. Sigma stands for um, the sigma at the end of curios. Uh, curios is nominative, nominative singular, which means that it's the subject of the sentence. So if we look over here at the English, it says the Lord hollowing them. 
the Lord is the one who is doing the action. The Lord is hollowing them. So that means in English, the Lord would be the subject. Now, let's move over to Matthew chapter 1, verse 17. In this example, I'm not using all of uh, verse 17. I'm just using the third, the third section of verse 17. And this will be, if you look in Textus Sinaiticus, you will see it will be in the third column from the left, and it will be the first start of a new paragraph. So not at the top of the column, because the top of the column is in the middle of a sentence and in the middle of a paragraph. But if you scroll down just a tiny bit, there'll be a break. And then there'll be sort of like a, what looks like a new paragraph. And that is exactly where I'm coming from. So uh, if you look at that on the website, that's where you'll find this text that I'm going to show you. Now, if you look at the Greek text or the English text, you'll notice that there's only two words or letters uh, combination letter combinations that are actually shortened the first one is is in the third row from the top or the second row from the bottom and it's he ypsilon ypsilon looks like a y he looks like an x now the only thing that i can think of that that could be and it is because if you look in other manuscripts where they don't shorten it it's um that's what it is is christos or um, to decline it properly as the way it shows, it, it would be Christu. Um, and remember, Ypsilon shows that it is the genitive singular, so Christu. Um, Christu is Christ, but in this case, Christu is um, Christ being used as a genitive singular. So if we look to the right, it says, um, until Christ... Um, it's not the genitive singular or the possessive doesn't really, in this case, uh, translate into English at all. Um, but in Greek, they thought of it as a possessive, I suppose you could say. Uh, it's because of the first word in the sentence, which is the first three letters in this row, which is epsilon, looks like an E, omega, which looks like an omega, and sigma, which looks like a sigma, uh, which is else, so else to Christu. Um, which means until Christ. So then we have one final um, shortening, which is the letters Iota and Delta. Um, now, this is kind of different than what we've seen so far. So far, we've seen uh, words, particularly nouns, being shortened um, by removing some of the letters. This is slightly different. This is actually a number. Um, in most of the manuscripts, or in the manuscripts that you can read, where you can buy, like, for example, uh, Nestle's uh, Greek New Testament, or, um, you know, the Byzantine uh, New Testament that you can find on Amazon, all of that stuff, usually what they do, I think, is um, a lot of times it's spelled out. So if we look to, at the right in English, it says 14, that uses symbols. We could also say 14 by spelling the word 14. In Greek, if we look to the left again, in Greek, it could be spelled, or they could use the uh, letters of the alphabet to represent the number, and that's exactly what they're doing. And that's why they put the uh, line over it to show that they're shortening it from a spelled out number to um, a number that's represented by uh, letters. So Iota is the tenth letter of the Greek alphabet if you include some of the ancient characters that they used um, to count with. And Delta is the fourth letter of the Greek alphabet. So 10 plus 4 equals 14, and that's how you get to 14 years. So that's that. Many names and words can be shortened in Greek. Which names have been shortened and how they were shortened depends on the writer. In ancient manuscripts from around Jesus' time, a line was usually drawn above the letters to signify they form a shortened word. If you want more information about Jesus' name, go to dinoglos.com slash Jesus and the number one.